Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Two years ago, I bought an off-grid abandoned hunting camp. Now, this is a dry cabin, which means there's no water in it. Fortunately for us, it did have a hand pump well. It's a sand point well. I think it's inch and a quarter. It's 25 foot deep. Inside the old cabin, they had an old broken pitcher pump that didn't work. So I went down to Menards, picked one up, tried it out on the well, and lo and behold, it worked. It has water and it's good water. I bought a testing kit and tested it. Nothing wrong with that water there. And any of y'all know that if you're gonna be doing a lot of work on a piece of property, at the end of the day, you're gonna to wanna to clean up, either a bath or a shower. I gotta tell you, there ain't nothing quite like having a place to shower when you're out at the camp. So I ended up building an outdoor shower house, and I'll put a link in the description below and you can watch that build if you'd like to. Got four walls, shower curtain, my on-demand water heater. This thing works fantastically. I bought one of those propane on-demand water heaters, put it in the shower, and we used it for the last year and it worked pretty good. But in the last year, I've learned a couple of things and I wanted to share that with you. What I did was cut a hole in a 55 gallon plastic food grade drum and we filled it from the well with a five gallon bucket and dropped one of these little sump pumps down inside, hooked the water hose to it and then hooked the water hose to this shower. We plugged it in, we had water pressure, turned on the propane and you could take a nice pot shower. That worked great for the first few times we were up there. Now there are two adjustment knobs on the front of these showers. So one's for the gas, one's for the water. The last two times I was up there, I was having trouble dialing it in. I've never had that trouble before. I believe the reason we had issues with the other shower, the water coming into this was not filtered and it got sand up in here. A couple of times I had to drain this out, sand came out. Uh, it did get into the water and if you are clogging up the water, the little button on the shower handle, when you turn the shower on, it automatically lights the gas. And then when you shut it off, it automatically shuts off. If the water line is clogged and doesn't have proper pressure, then the gas isn't gonna work correctly. So that's why I'm building this filter system to see if that works. So what I'm gonna do now is build a pump and filtration system that I can put on this shower and we don't have to worry about those issues anymore. This shower is temporary. Once I have the cabin completely built, I will be building a shower house. Who knows, this could be a year, year and a half by the time I get to that point to build a shower house. And I don't wanna wait that long to take a shower. My wife says I stink. Now I paid about $169 on Amazon for that on-demand water heater, shower combination. But the good news is I have another one. Y'all remember that old nasty travel trailer that was on that off-grid property when I bought it? Yeah, this one. I was gonna save it, keep the frame to build a sawmill on, but I had one of the neighbors that wanted to build just a little wood hauling trailer, so I give it to him. Well, this trailer was loaded with trash. It had five or six bags of pop and beer cans and bottles. Well, I cleaned that whole trailer out and there was one cupboard in that whole thing that was undamaged, didn't have mold on it, anything. And in that cupboard, I opened it up and there was a brand new box, never been opened, and this was in it. So evidently the guy forgot he had it in that cupboard when he decided to use it for a garbage trailer. No telling how long this was in there, but I'm gonna use this one, put the filters and everything on this, and I'll bring the other one home and see if I can repair it. On the bottom here, you can see we have a gas input, a water output, this actually goes to your shower. This is the water drain. And this is a garden hose connection. And that's what they use. And when you use garden hose connections and you're trying to build a filter system like I'm trying to do, you kind of use a hodgepodge of stuff. PVC fittings, they will drop down to the thread size that I need to put this together. Got a couple of garden hose ends, got some Teflon tape. The hose, the connection hose out of our old travel trailer we no longer had. I did cut the end off of it for something else, but I've kept this. And this is what I'm going to use to make up this filter system to go to my shower. The water inlet here, they have little rubber gaskets for them, so you really don't need to put Teflon tape on this. You just need to tighten it in, give it a couple little turns just to tighten it up on the gasket. 
and you'll be fine. Now you just hook your male end of the hose into that. The first thing I want to tell you is I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. I bought these with my own money on Amazon. I will leave the links below if you're interested in any of this stuff and you want to build one of these systems yourself. This is an Ecoworthy RV pump. It's 12 volt. I wanted to switch from 110 to 12 volt. Uses less power, a little bit quieter if you're running a solar generator. This pumps 3.5 gallons per minute and has an automatic pressure switch that shuts off when it hits 55 pounds. It comes with one of these little pre-strainers, but the screen in that is not small enough to get some of those sand particles. So I'm not gonna use this. I'm gonna be using this one. Pull off these protective caps. This is called a water drop bend down sediment filter. These you put on well systems. What they'll do is the water comes up from the well, it comes in and spins inside this, and all the sediment goes to the middle and comes down through this filter here, and that's a 50 micron filter. You can turn this valve down here and it'll let that sediment come out. So you can clean it that way, or you can take a wrench and unscrew this and clean it that way. One thing you should know, it is really never a good idea to put a male metal fitting into a female plastic fitting. Now you're gonna watch me do that because that's all they had for these hose connections, these brass fittings. You can actually over tighten a male fitting into plastic and cause it to break out. So if you're going to do this, use some Teflon tape, use some pipe dope, put it in there, and you can generally tell when that thing starts to get tight enough to start stripping or breaking. Stop there. It don't need to be gorilla tight. Be gentle. You'll be fine. I like to put three or four wraps of this stuff on there. It just ensures that you have less problems with leaks. Okay, I can feel this tightening up. That's about all I want to go on that. I don't know if you can hear that wind blowing. It's a little loud here, but it's not the blowing that's bothering me. I've got a brisket over in my redneck smoker. I built a smoker a couple years ago out of a file cabinet. If you want to see that, I'll put a link below and you can see how to build a really inexpensive, very well working file cabinet smoker. It's been on there for a couple of hours, but the smell of that is making me hungry. It's going to make some great sandwich meat for our trip to Michigan. We'll be leaving Friday morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I think that ought to do it. So that's what it should look like. Now I can hook a female end to this side and a male end to this side. Need a little piece of garden hose to go from here to here. So we'll give that a quick measure. I think that'll work. What about you? Tighten that up. I put a little bit of clear silicone on that. That's just a hair smaller than the diameter of the hose, so you just want to make sure it stays sealed. There we go. It's a marine grade silicone, so I guess the water won't hurt it. All right, I think it'll work. Put that in there, and then this will screw onto the water pump. I want to put this female adapter on the end of this, but it's just a little snug. So I'm going to see if I can make this go over that adapter. See if that's enough persuasion. Get that stretched up there enough. Looks like it's pushed all the way up on there. Now we can just squeeze those shut. Yeah, that's pretty cool now. Should be ready to go. Went ahead and hooked this cord up to the pump. This will fit in the back of my EcoFlow solar generator. I want to have a mounting surface for these. So I'm thinking of a piece of plywood, a couple of them. I'm going to glue them together and paint them. And I'll probably have to put a piece of 2x4 under there to get this raised up so I can use these pipe clamps on either side to hold it in place. Mm -hmm. 
got the plywood backing sheet. I've got a piece of two by four cut to size. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this together. I've decided to glue and clamp a couple of these pieces together. That way the plywood's a little thicker and then I can paint it. Get a couple of clamps on here. So we'll let that set up. Well, the paint's dry on it. Looks pretty good. Looks like that'll set on there pretty nicely. So let's go ahead and get it connected to it. I have two inch long, quarter inch by 20 thread bolts with uh, screw heads on them. You can use either a slotted or Phelps. I have a washer and then these nylock nuts. They'll keep those things from coming undone. Just kind of line up these pipe clamps about where you want them. You can unscrew this, remove it, and then you can set these right up in place. These are screws for holding down a metal roof and they're designed to go through the roof into a wood purlin. They're great for wood. That's what I have that will work. That's what I'm gonna to use to hold these in here. It looks like it'll work. And the last little thing I did is I put a couple of these screw eyes into this and then I've got these hooks. These hooks I'm gonna put on our shower. That way, all we gotta do is put this up and hang it on there when we're using it. And then we can drain it and take it back off when we're not using it. So when we get up to the cabin, I'll put these on the exterior of the shower. These things run on D-cell batteries, so I'm gonna stick a couple of those in there. So that should make it start when I turn on the water. Well, we got enough water in this for demonstration purposes. It's up to the first bottom line. Maybe I should leave the dirt on there. That way we can watch it filter it off. I set my EcoFlow Delta II Max up on my little outdoor picnic table. Love this little picnic table. It's cut out on both sides so people that are sloppy eaters can get closer to the table. You can use this for just about anything. Maybe even a shooting bench. Who knows? Well, I've turned on the EcoFlow. We'll make sure we got power to the back. And we do. So now we can pump this water up. The propane is on. You can hear the air pressure coming out of this. It's pumping up the water. This is the water pressure on low. Turn it up. We've got shower. Oh, that's good and warm. Let's make it a little warmer. Oh yeah. Let's see how hot it can get. I'm gonna turn that bad boy up to hot. Oh, there's where my wife would like it. She likes it about 211 degrees. She doesn't like it boiling. I like it about 90. Now we can just adjust the water pressure a little bit. As you adjust the water pressure down and the gas up, the water gets a little warmer. Now when you want to shut everything down, this is the switch. You just shut the water off, shuts off the gas, shuts off the water, you're done. Well, I sure hope this video was entertaining and helpful to you. I certainly don't think we'll have near the problems with the shower anymore now that I have a filtration system for it to filter out the sand from the well. I want to thank you all for hanging out with me for the last few minutes. If you've been around for a while and subscribed to my channel, thanks for sticking around. And if you're new to the channel, thank you for joining. And if this is your first time and you like what you see, check out some of my other videos. If you enjoy them, consider liking and subscribing to the channel and hitting that little bell and you'll be notified when I do other videos. You know life is short. If there's things you want to do, get out and do them. None of us are ever promised tomorrow. I just want to thank God for giving me the ability to do these things. Thanks again for being here. I appreciate all of you and make your life an adventure. And God bless. <laughs>